Hello and welcome back to Comic Vantage and here we are today with our preview spotlight. I will be showing you a lot of the great books that are coming out January 2020. Now when I say great I mean more like meh. <laughs> I wasn't really excited with anything coming out. I was actually kind of hard pressed to find a full video worth of books to show. Um, and let's see we are going to start out right away with the DC book like we always do. First up DC is really pushing this Wonder Woman uh, 750 for January 2020. They're giving it the full like Batman and Action Comics 1000 treatment, prestige format, 10 bucks, ton of variant covers. We have the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000 and 2010s variant cover. I am really excited to see that Brian Bolin cover along with the J. Scott Campbell cover. We all know anything J. Scott Campbell touches just kind of turns to gold. So. Next up for the month, we have Birds of Prey number one. Now, what really struck me, this is a one-shot, and uh, it is $10 also, prestige format. But what really got me is this, DC Black Label. So expect mature audiences on this, people. So, all right. Now, if my DC guide decides to behave for some reason my previews uh, video or my previews dc section of the catalog just does not want to load for some crazy reason oh what do we got here come on you can do it maybe not can you not do it oh seriously i don't even know what's happening right now here we go Joe Hill presents Hill House Comics' Daphne Byrne. This actually looks really good. It's a new creepy book from the Joe Hill curated line, Hill House Comics. You know, so with uh, DC folding up Vertigo, they kind of need a more edgy sort of horror-influenced uh, storylines. And Hill House is actually really fitting the bill on that one, so very excited. What else we got? We have a facsimile edition of Detective Comics 359. Look at that. That should be really cool. First appearance of Batgirl going on there. And Catwoman number 19. Now, nothing too exciting by this, but I wanted to show this awesome variant cover by Ian McDonald, I believe. Yes, Ian McDonald. Beautiful cover. Totally worth checking it out. And we get up here to Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, issue number five. Now, again, I'm looking at this for a cover grab because we have two different covers coming out by Joshua Middleton. We have a Harley Quinn cover and a Poison Ivy cover. So those are really good looking right now. These are the preliminary shots, so I can't wait to see them completely colored in. He-Man and the Multiverse, issue number three. Now, everybody should be buying He-Man and the Multiverse. By this time, it has been out for two months. The story's kicking into high gear. King Hiss is showing up, and he's just, you know, wreaking havoc on everyone. Now, if you're not reading this, you should be. It's uh, also drawn by my buddy Dan Frega. If you haven't checked him out, he has his own channel on YouTube called Couch Doodles. He does videos all the time doing art tutorials and talking about the stuff that he does. So, you guys really check it out. He's a great guy. And then Red Hood Outlaw number 42. Love me some Red Hood, especially now that Artemis and Bizarro are back. The Unholy Trinity is back together in DC Comics, and I cannot wait. I've been this is a long time coming. I miss those guys in this story. Next up, we have only a couple more. No, this one. Oh, here we go. Oh, it half loaded. <laughs> Basket full of heads, issue number four. Again, coming out of the Joe Hill line. Everybody should be reading these. They look creepy and cool and scary. So we got Basket full of heads. This should be the next one if it ever decides to load. There we go. The Dollhouse family. Okay, tell me that cover could get any creepier. I don't even know what to make of that. And last but not least. Our favorite man without skin, if it ever decides to show up. Burr, 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 burr. There we go. The low, low woods. Ah, awesome. And the last things I wanted to show from DC Comics, like I said, it was really fast. Not a huge showing. And we have a couple dollar books if they ever decide to pop up. Here we go. Dollar Comics, Brave and the Bold, 197, Earth 2's Wedding of Batman and Catwoman. So that's cool. And then a dollar reprint of Batman Adventures 12, reprinting, reprinting Harley Quinn's first comic book appearance. So yeah, awesome on that. That is our DC book. We will be going up to our Marvel next. 
All right, now we get into our Marvel book. And now, let's see. Marvel actually has a pretty decent showing. We got uh, all these previews coming up for Marvel Thor number one. I believe they're actually soliciting Thor one and two in this book, if I'm not mistaken. And wow, look at all the variant covers. Blank variant, Rainbow Bridge variant, cover by Jen Bartel. I mean, we got... Oliver, and we got Jack Kirby and Ryan Stegman. Yes, Jack Kirby. We have a hidden gem variant by Jack Kirby. If I'm not mistaken, one of these covers is going to be a 1 in 200. That is right, a 1 in 200 cover. So, written by Donny Cates, which is always a fan favorite. Yes, and they're promoting Thor 2 right away. Well, we got him fighting Silver Surfer. Ooh, the Black Winter and the Devourer King. That's a pretty cool cover. Man, that's some great artwork right there. That's the variant cover by Ryan Stegman, it says. Also this month, Guardians of the Galaxy number one with a crap ton of variants again. Yes, woo. But, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy is a fan favorite, so you cannot fault Marvel for doing that. If people are going to buy them, they are going to make them. Next up, we got 2020 starting. Iron Man event decades in the making. Starting with Iron Man 2020, issue number one. This is the fifth color fluorescent ink main cover by Pete Woods. You know, Iron Man 2020 has got himself a little makeover there. All right, let's see what we got. This is a whole year of 2020 starting. Iron Man 2020 number one in January. In February... Iron Man, Force Works, and Machine Man 2020. I've been waiting for Force Works to come back. I loved that book back in the 90s. All right, so we got Iron Man again 2020 in March. We got Iron Age, which is the new one. We got Rescue 2020, number one coming out. More Force Works, more Rescue. Iron Heart 2020. What is this? So we got Iron Heart getting her own little 2020 makeover. And then we have some classified books. Really excited for this whole 2020 line. Like I said, I've been really hyping it up all year long. I've been telling everybody to snatch up that Machine Man 2020 issue number two, the first appearance of Iron Man 2020. So we'll see if my little work paid off there. Got some cool covers. This Iron Man 2020 costume is really, really neat. It's definitely got a, a revamp. It's still got the gears on the shoulders like the classic Iron Man 2020, but it's got this whole modern sort of take on it, which is really cool. I love this Ron Lim cover. Really neat. I cannot wait for that. Whew, let's see. Oh, we got this whole Ravencroft thing happening. From the Ruins Emerge 3 one-shots. Setting the stage for. So we got Ruins of Ravencroft Carnage. You know, Ravencroft is kind of like their insane asylum for the criminally insane. We got Ravencroft Sabretooth, which is, you know, looks like a Wolverine sort of thing going on there. And then Dracula. Ooh. Ruins of Ravencroft Dracula. And then we have a, a, a Ravencroft 5-issue miniseries going on as well. And then we got some True Believers Month with everything that ties into the whole Ravencroft line. We got some Daredevil and some Spider-Man and some Moon Knight. So yes, everybody will be jumping all over those. What else we got? Bringing you the final stories of your favorite Marvel heroes. The end. Now this actually sounded kind of cool. Spanning from the near future to the end of the universe, from happily ever after to the depths of despair, these unforgettable and surprising tales follow our heroes to their natural and unnatural conclusions. Now, it looks like what they're doing is, is they're putting out these one-shot issues. I think they're one-shot. Yep. And they're spotlighting the very final story of a character. Here in particular is Captain America. Written and drawn by Eric Larson. Surprising, right? Steve Rogers fights for survival in a post-apocalyptic wasteland populated by hordes of red skulls. This sounds really cool. And it's supposed to feature the end of Captain America. And then we have the end Deadpool, which is going to you know tell us the demise of Deadpool. Wade Wilson may seem like he is unkillable, but there is more than one way to put an end to him. But don't take my word for it. So that is going to be really cool. What else we got here? And then we have 
Captain Marvel, the end number one, with the final chapter of Carol Danvers. Fifty years ago, Carol Danvers went into the deepest reach of the cosmos to spread peace and justice, and she hasn't seen a familiar face since. Whatever happened to the planet she once called home? So, kind of neat. What else do we got for this month? This one was cool. Miles Morales. Look, you got old man Miles. That's going to be pretty neat. Everybody who's a fan of Miles Morales is really going to enjoy that one. Now, this one got me. I have to pick this up, and this is Venom, the end, number one. The alien symbiote who bonded with Eddie Brock has been through a lot, but not nearly as much as he has coming. In a tale that literally spans over a trillion years, Venom travels the length of space and time as the last defender of life in the universe. Yeah, that sounds really neat. And this cover is creepy and cool. I love it to death. And then we have a Doctor Strange, the end, number one. And then coming up from the pages of, of Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel, we have Star, issue number one of five. Great cover on this. And we do have uh, Campbell version covers coming out, regular trade dress and virgin, and a couple others. But, you know, Campbell's going to be the one everybody's going to want. And then Marvel's X, issue number one of six, reuniting Jim Kruger and Alex Ross back together again, telling us stories of the Earth X universe. Jim Kruger's a great writer. I cannot wait for some of these stories. Marvel X, so cool. All right, let's see where else we've gone from here. <laughs> Weapon Plus, World War IV. Number one, I mean, that's straight up, that's a man thing, all armored up. Look at that. He's like a super soldier. So cool. And this actually tells the story of a you know, U.S. government agency who builds these super soldiers that end up looking like man thing. Just crazy. Coming up, this is, wow, right here. Marvel is just Look at that. They are finally taking a stand on this. Incredible Hulk 180, the facsimile edition. First appearance of Wolverine. That is right. Marvel has said it, that 180 is now the first appearance. I've been saying it for years. I mean, the final page has a full page of Wolverine, and it says his name and everything. It's like, how can not this, this not be the first appearance? But there you go. First appearance of Wolverine. Facsimile edition, so if you can... You know, I'm sure 180s are going to start skyrocketing now, so that should be interesting. All right, next up, we have Wolverine 3D. Yes, you heard that correct. 3D, a classic tale of Wolverine from the powerhouse creative team of Chris Claremont and John Bushima and Bill Sienkiewicz. Now in a sensational 3D, so that's actually kind of cool. We'll have to wait and see how that turns out, you know, 3D comics. <laughs> All right, we got some amazing Spider-Man coming up. Daily Bugle, issue number one of five. Here we go. Avengers of the Wastelands. Now, this is a new story from the world of Old Man Logan. In a world where most of the superheroes fell at the hands of the Red Skull over 50 years ago, a new force rises in the wasteland. Danny Cage wields the mighty Mjolnir for the cause of peace, and when the brutal regime of Doctor Doom forces Dwight, a.k.a. the owner of the surviving Ant-Man technology, to Danny and Hulk in a last-ditch effort to survive, the Avengers may assemble once more. So this actually sounds kind of cool. I loved the Old Man Logan world. Wow, it was dark, it was gritty, it was mean, it was just really wrong, and I loved every minute of it. So it be exciting to see some books that take place in that world. Then we have Tarot, issue number one of four. Let's see. This is an all-new epic adventure teaming the classic Earth's Mightiest Heroes with Marvel's premier non-team by Alan Davis and Paul Renard. A strange and impossible lost memory from his days in World War II draws Namor to his one-time compatriot, Captain America. But the two heroes and their respective allies find themselves pulled into a labyrinth of pain, destruction, and madness. So that actually sounds kind of fun. Yeah, any place where there's pain, destruction, and madness is, you know, definitely a good time. <laughs> and then we also got Tarot, issue number two of four, for the exact same, you know, later in the month. All right. Here we go. We got some Jessica Jones popping up. Their own little six-issue mini coming out. Blind Spots, issue number one and two, both coming out for the month. Here's the cover of issue one. That's absolutely 
beautiful. Love that cover. It's so cool. Jumping ahead here, Immortal Hulk, issue number one, Great Power. I know, what is this? It is a one-shot where the Immortal Hulk takes over Bruce or uh, Peter Parker's body, so that should be kind of fun. Web of Venom, The Good Son, issue number one. And this tells the story of Goblin Child and the Son of Venom. That is right, Dylan Block, Brock and Normie Osborn get team up together. Let's jump ahead. Nope, nope, and nope. Wrong pages. Oh, that's just a cool cover there on Mary Jane. <laughs> Okay, hey, Marvel Spider-Man The Black Cat Strikes, number one of five, from the Gamerverse line. And actually, these are just some really cool covers. I love these, so I'm really excited to see that book. Got some Addy Granov coming on. And we have new Star Wars books coming out for the month. Written by Charles Soule, who uh, is fresh off of the Darth Vader books. And man, if you haven't read his Darth Vader line, who boy, God, they were so good. So here we go. Star Wars issue number one and two coming out beginning and end of the month. We have a ton of variants. No, I am your father. In the wake of the events following the Empire Strikes Back, it is a dark time for the heroes of the Rebellion. The Rebel fleet scattered following a disastrous defeat at the hands of the Battle of Hoth. Han Solo lost to the Bounty Hunter. Yada yada, everybody knows the story. So this is going to take place between uh, Empire and Return of the Jedi. So those should be a lot of fun to read. And you know, Charles Soule, man, he knows how to write Star Wars. Wow, he's so cool. Man, that's a couple great panels there. Look at that. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful book. Hey, and then we have The Rise of Kylo Ren, issue number two and four coming out. All right, people, so that is it for Marvel. Um, next up, we are going to get into the big book. Look at that. Some uh, bloodshot right there on the cover. All right, and the big book encompasses everything that is not Marvel or DC, so there's a lot of ground to cover. All right, let's start with, I believe, Image is first up. But even Image had a really lackluster kind of showing for the month. I think there's only two books. I'm showing this one here, Protector Number 1, which actually sounds kind of, kind of fun. Of all the tribes that dwell in the hot ruins of far future North America, the Hudsoni reign supreme, but even they fear and obey the godlike Devas. When the Devas warn of an old world demon in the conquered city of Chicago, Hudsoni war chief First Knife decides to deal with the threat personally. Yeah, it sounds kind of like a cool, futuristic, uh, post apocalyptic kind of thing, so I'm all about that, so it's worth a shot to read. Next up, The Clock, issue number one of four. Within three weeks, hundreds of millions of healthy people worldwide contract various forms of aggressive cancer. And the proliferation seemingly a viral outbreak stumps the best scientific minds. But after a leading cancer researcher loses his wife and watches his nine-year-old child or daughter begin to succumb to the same illness, he must race against the clock to end a global conspiracy that could propel the world straight into World War III or worse. I mean, that just sounds... Wow, what a premise where everybody on the earth just contracts cancer all at once. I mean, that's kind of insane. All right, so what else we got here? Oh, actually, this is kind of cool from Image, the Complete Witchblade. This thing is huge. 624 pages, comes out January 22nd, 30 bucks. You get Witchblade 1 through 19, The Darkness issue number 9 and 10, and Tales of the Witchblade 1 half and number 3. Like I said, for 624 pages at $30, and you get beautiful Michael Turner goodness, and Mark Silvestri, and Tony Daniels, and David Finch, and Billy Tan. I mean, yeah, I am all over that. That's some really, really good names right there. Okay, what else do we got? And then we jump ahead more to Image Comics. Ice Cream Man, number 17. Ice Cream Man was a breakout hit for the past couple years. Everybody's really been enjoying it, and a lot of it have been cover grabs. And I gotta say, that cover right there grabs me. <laughs> so that will be the B issue. 
So everybody keep an eye out for that. Kind of fun. Okay, next up, Dark Horse Comics is bringing us a new Stranger Things miniseries, issue number one and five, Into the Fire. And this brings more of the kids and their psychic abilities and trying to live normal lives. So that sounds kind of, kind of fun and cool. What else do we got? Frankenstein Undone, issue number one and five. Now, this is Mike Mignola's take on Frankenstein. You cannot go wrong with that. Mike Mignola is a really good writer and artist and has some great ideas. Frankenstein's creator lies dead in the icy grip of the Arctic, and the monster searches for a new purpose. Just as he thinks he found one with a group of unlikely companions, disaster strikes, and the monster is catapulted out of Mary Shelley's novel and into the world of Hellboy. That is going to be a lot of fun. Okay, issue number one or issue number one hundred of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and this is a deluxe hardcover edition they are doing, and it's a trade paperback, one hundred and twenty pages, and it is the oversized deluxe hardcover version of TMNT number one hundred, featuring behind the scenes artwork, commentary, and rare cover work. So this is great for fans of TMNT. Oh, all right. Let's see. Jumping ahead again. What do we got here? Nope, not Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> I don't. Oh, here we go. Usagi Yojimbo Color Classics issue number one. This is reprinting Usagi number one in full color. So, you know, if you know any Usagi fans out there, tell them about it. And then we have a spotlight on Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four Artisan Edition. So this is... Okay, Jack Kirby is one of the most important creators in the history of comics, and the Fantastic Four is one of his greatest achievements. And this is in... It includes Fantastic Annual number 6, the 48-page groundbreaking story that features the birth of Franklin Richards. And it also presents issues 71, 82, 83, and 84, featuring the Inhumans, Doctor Doom, and others. Plus, we have a gallery section from Kirby's Most Incredible Pages, all scanned from the original artwork. So... If you know any Kirby fans out there, there's good stuff there. You know, I wish it was actually Christmas time. I'd tell you to buy these things for gifts. More Artisan Editions we have coming out, and this one really struck me, and that is the Max. Sam Keith's The Max Artist Edition. I'm a huge Max fan, so I might end up grabbing that for myself. Okay, and then we are down into Dynamite, and Dynamite is bringing us... Red Sonja Age of Chaos, where they are combining Red Sonja and Chaos Comics together. Chaos Comics, as we know, encompasses everything from Lady Demon to Purgatory to Evil Ernie. Um, doesn't have Lady Death in it because Brian Polito still owns the rights to Lady Death, but we got every other Chaos character showing up here. Some beautiful covers, like this Lucio Potarello cover. I mean, wow, that is just kind of striking. That dude does some good work. Along with this is we have some icon covers coming up that you really, really need to see. There's a whole bunch of variants. The Hellfire variant. We have the sketch variant and the black and white pencil variant. And then we have the Jim Lee variant. That's right. We have a Jim Lee icon edition incentive cover. Way back in the day, Jim Lee did a cover for Red Sonja and they are reusing his artwork. Over here... John Romita Sr. and Jr. together. Look at that. Icon incentive cover. Those could be... Now, this is... I believe the John Romita is a 1 in 60. The Jim Lee is a 1 in 70. So if you can find them, grab them. Because, wow, yeah, those are going to be hot. Okay. Jumping ahead. Jumping ahead. Do, do, do. A Blaze Comics brings us a book called Kids Number 1. This is actually kind of interesting. Now, I'm not sure what to make of it. It sounds kind of fun, but I'm on the fence. So let me let me read you this, and then you guys can decide. It's been three months since a terrible epidemic turned the population into hungry zombies for fresh meat. Only after devouring almost all of humanity, the undead themselves begin to wither and fall into famine. Somewhere in a suburban town, Ben, 10 years old and still traumatized by the death of his parents, forms with his friends the last bastion of humanity, and between hunting zombie survivors, expeditions to amass food, toys, and comics, 
all filmed by the aptly named Spielberg, life flows rather peacefully in our world, in their world, until something worse than a nuclear disaster or the four flashing rings of death on an Xbox 360 hits their small community. Two girls. <laughs> Accustomed to chilling by the pool, eating chocolate bars, and playing video games. How will the boys react to Polly's bizarre new customs and her little sister, Sue? So, I mean, it sounds cute. It could be kind of fun. Maybe more of a kid's read. But, you know, if you know... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it might be kind of neat. I'm going to give it a shot. Because a lot of times when I see kids' comics, they end up not being kids' comics. And they end up just being really, really fun. <coughs> Scooby Apocalypse. <coughs> Scooby Apocalypse. <laughs> all right and then we're going to jump over here we have a spotlight on twin worlds and i believe who is this coming out of i want to say this is mad cave but i could be wrong nope action lab my mistake twin worlds from action lab led by chieftain vin raja an armed force of native dracarans attack an outpost by the imperialist earthers who colonized their planet the dracaran forced to take Forces take prisoners of war, which include native traders who work for the Earthers and make an example out of them back in the capital. So this is a sci-fi action war kind of story. So, you know, that actually, I mean, it's sci-fi and action. You really can't go wrong with a lot of that. Let's see. Let's jump ahead here. Hey, from the pages of the goon come the unholy bastards versus the future. That's right. Unholy bastards bursting out of the pages of goon come into their own one shot, I believe it is. Do, do, do. Yep, it is a one shot, so that's going to be fun. Next up. All right, here we go. Cat Shit One. No, I am not kidding. That is the name. And this is Kobayashi's renowned war manga, filled with painstaking detail, returns to the printed page, but at full comic size for the first time ever. In this semi-fictionalized rendition of the Vietnam War, Sergeant, Sergeants Perky, Rats, and Batowski comprise the Special For Forces unit named Cat Shit One, risking their lives daily in recon patrol, jungle ambushes, tactical assault, rescue operations, and more. These soldiers may look soft, but their combat tails hit hard. And seriously, look at that. Yep, we have anthropomorphic animals. Retranslated, remastered, completely authorized. You know, I've actually heard of this story before, and I heard it's supposed to be absolutely amazing. Never got a chance to read it, and it's coming out of Antarctic Press. This is their 35th anniversary, and they are Antarctic Press has just been rocking it the last couple years. Pretty much anything they put out is amazing. Okay, next up. Now, this I have no idea whatsoever what to make of this, but apparently. Aspen Comics is is putting out their own retailer exclusives of Marvel Comics. Okay, it's a, look at this. We have Black Cat issue number two from Marvel Comics, put out by Aspen Comics with Michael Turner covers. Okay, then. So we have this issue right here, cover A. It is a trade dress cover limited to 3,000 copies. Down here we have the B, Virgin cover, also limited. Oh, actually, I believe, oh, only 1,000 copies. Now, the only way to get the B cover is to buy the set of both of them together. Now, both of these together are going to run you $50. That's right, 50 bucks. The trade dress cover by itself is 20 bucks. The pair is 50. Like I said, the only way to get that second cover 50 bucks. Now, that is not the only one they have out for the month. They are also doing an Immortal Hulk issue number 20. We have the first Virgin variant cover limited to 1,500 copies. Now, this book, I believe, is th uh, 25 by itself. And then we have the set with cover B. Now, the only way to get the set or to get cover B is to buy the set. And this one is $70. And cover B is limited to 1,000 copies so you know i don't know if this is going to be a thing or not with aspen putting out their own covers for marvel comics i mean every artist out there does it and every retailer has their own exclusive but different companies i mean this is a little hey, and there you go and you have the mass the the marvel slash aspen comics logo you know if only time will tell but like i said with those limited numbers they are worth a second look 
All right, what else do we got here? From Scout Comics, we have Tart number one. This is the newest entry in the new nonstop imprint for Scout Comics. Now, what Scout Comics does, they put out one book, you read it, and then they put out all the rest in a big trade, so you can just binge read the whole thing if you like it. So that's kind of like a little taste test. If you like it, then you buy the rest. If not, no harm, no foul. Okay, history is a fragile thing. One small change can alter everything that comes after. A little boy has vanished in 1950s New York. Tart Acid, who arrives out of thin air, uh, is baffles, is or everyone is baffled by this mysterious disappearance except her. All she knows is that she's been sent and a demon is loose and threatening the history of the world. That actually sounds kind of like fun. Other one we have out from Scout Comics is we have White Ash. Now, this is not a binge book. This is actually going to be a quick little mini, apparently. Welcome to White Ash, a small smudge of a town in western Pennsylvania, where mining is a generational calling and the secrets are buried deep, deeper than coal in the mountain. As Alec tries to escape that legacy and head off to college, he falls into the orbit of the enigmatic Lillian Alden. Together they race down a dangerous path, leading Alec to uncover a secret about his family that changes everything he knows. That actually sounds like fun. And then it talks about an ancient evil. So, you know, we're expecting some supernatural as well. All right. Only two more books I want to show. First up, Quantum and Woody from Valiant Comics. Seriously, it's Quantum. If you've never read Quantum and Woody, Quantum and Woody is it's zany. It's fun. It's just a blast of a series coming out of Valiant. So they are relaunching it with a number one issue. I would highly recommend picking it up. And then this here, Roku number four. Now, Roku's been out for a few months up until this point, but this Tyler Kirkham cover right here, smack dab in the middle, is absolutely beautiful. Wow, I want that cover. Man, look at just the color and the red, and oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. All right, people, that is it for the Diamond Previews. That is everything that I suggest you should buy coming out January 2020. All right, so thank you for watching. This video might have been a little long, but hey, you know, it's a fun ride. I'm glad you guys stuck around. To all my current subscribers, thank you for watching. You guys are awesome. To my patrons, oh man, you guys are amazing. Love you all, especially my new Mystery Box patrons. You guys are rocking it. For those who don't know, go sign up on my Patreon account for $35, the $35 tier you will get a mystery box every month sent to your front door. That is right, anywhere in the U.S., $35, save five bucks off retail price. You cannot beat that for my amazing mystery boxes. If you're new to the channel, hit the little CV down in the corner and hit the little bell, let you know when I got all the cool stuff coming out. And like always, guys, thank you for watching and take it easy.